one here of the Masters Division Grand Finals at the 2022 European International Championships. Oliver is leading out with Landorus and Kyogre straight out onto the battlefield with Groudon and Charizard coming out for Eric. Now the weather will be determined by the speeds of these restricteds. Yeah, and knowing that the speeds of them, the Groudon is going to be the slower of the two. So the sun will be set here on Eric's side of the field, which is going to be a mm -hmm. huge advantage to not only reduce the damage of those big water type attacks from the Kyogre that's out on the field for Oliver, but it also powers up the Charizard with that solar power ability as well. Got to be a little bit wary around the Landorus, but mm -hmm. we do know there's a Charty Berry on the Charizard, so it is going to be able to take those big threatening rock type attacks if the Landorus does decide to go for those. Exactly, an amazing item choice on that Charizard, allowing it to survive one of those powerful max rock falls and potentially get up a G-Max Wildfire set up for that residual damage. And even if the item does get proc, yes, you still have to worry about the Landorus still applying that strong pressure. But sometimes Charizard is able to do what it needs to do in that one turn it is bought by the Charty Berry. It can also, of course, go for something like a Max Airstream to boost up the speed. But instead, it's just going to dive out of the field. For our personal favorite here, Lee, the Gastrodon is here in Grand Finals to draw in any of those water type attacks coming out from the Kyogre with its Storm Drain ability. Oliver making an adjustment as well. And Cineral is going to come in and throw an Intimidate down against that opposing Groudon. It may have got the Sun up on the field, but it's going to have a minus one attack stat. Yeah, and that's a nice play from Oliver, just to make sure that the Groudon isn't going mm -hmm. to be hitting as hard if it does stick around in the field, but <laughs> it's a revolving door of Pokemon Lou and the Groudon leaving for Eric with the Zashun making its way to the field. You said it, Lee. The double switch there from Eric, bringing in Zashun, getting its Intrepid Sword boost up, kind of laughing in the face of the Incineroar that's come in. It can get in unintimidated, and Kyogre just goes for a Protect, but no need, no need, Kyogre. Both players, you can tell, they don't want to take any big risks in in this turn one this is such a huge game both players very tentative just want to adjust their board position mm -hmm. be careful and try and set up a bit more of a comfort level for both of them on both sides of the field you know the Kyogre is still out in the field now not in a great position because that Gastrodon can launch a spread attack but obviously with the sun up it's not the preferable conditions can't really go for the max either here because the max guys that will be a single target attack going straight into that storm drain so you think Oliver needs to really reposition the Kyogre and maybe that is going to create a little bit of an opening for Eric to take a bit of an advantage but you've got to remember Oliver has perfectly put that Incineroar onto the field to have that active fake out to at least stall out something from the Zashin or even the Gastron if he expects something like a Yawn or maybe even a Behemoth Blade coming out. Well, you're right here, and Zashin's just going to go for the Protect, doesn't want to take any potential fake-out chip damage on the battlefield here, and it's not going to even be fake-out. Flare Blitz is going to go straight down into it, so a wise Protect from Eric. As Gastrodon goes for the Yawn, puts the Rillaboom that has just switched in to sleep, and that's something that Gastrodon definitely wants to be able to do here. You don't want to face down against a Rillaboom. Any of those Grass-type moves will deal significant damage to the Gastrodon, so it's just buying itself a little turn of time to either make the Rillaboom fall asleep if it wants to stay on the field, or force it to switch out. Yeah, it's a really nice play from Eric here, saying, you know, if you're going to keep that Rillaboom in and go for that Grass and Glide this next turn, then you're <laughs> going to get punished for that. And it's so easy for Eric just to switch out at this stage into that Charizard. It's going to resist that Grassy Glide, and it also doesn't really care too much about what the Incineroar is going to do either. Exactly, and Zashin's going to switch for that Charizard. Gastrodon staying on the field, maybe going to go for a Protect in the face of that Rillaboom just to potentially try and stop as get it to fall asleep, but instead the Rillaboom's going to switch out. So both these players, you said it earlier, Lee, the ball positioning is going to be critical, and you can see that they are calculating every single turn of this game one. Landorus switches and goes for the Intimidate, but it's null and void against both of these special attackers, but can apply pressure to that Charizard. Parting Shot comes out from the Incineroar as well. That's certainly going to help out Oliver by reducing the special attack of that opposing Charizard, making sure it's not going to be dealing as much damage as it could be if it wants to go for those G-Max moves, and particularly when the Landorus is in the field. It really is applying a lot of pressure onto this Charizard. Yeah, a lot of pressure. And now Oliver really well positioning with his Rillaboom, getting it back onto the field. Not worried about that Yawn, but Eric yeah. keeping that pressure no. going, going for the Yawn into that slot, catching the Rillaboom switch in once again. And Oliver not in the best position with his Rillaboom. It is going to go to sleep the next turn if it stays on the field. And Although you can switch the Rillaboom out to get the Kyogre onto the field to maybe give you a little bit of a buffer against mm -hmm. the potential G-Max Charizard Wildfire coming out. If the Gastrodon decides to switch out this turn, it is going to be the
be the slowest thing on the field, so the switch out will be last. So you could pull in maybe your Groud on here to guarantee that sun up to keep that solar power, get that extra power onto something like the Landorus, and just pick up a knockout and get that GMAX wildfire started. Yeah, really boom having a tough time against this Gastrodon that keeps finding its mark with those yawns. The Incineroar is going to come on, just be able to, you know, eat up any of those fire type moves coming up from the opposing Charizard, but also give Oliver the opportunity to go for a fake out in the next turn as well and apply that little bit more pressure. But we're going to see our first Dynamax here of game one. Going to be, I think, one of our favorite Pokemon. It uh, could be. It looks like it's going to be the Charizard mm -hmm. here. It is that Gigantamax Charizard. With the sun intact, we know the Kyogre is not going to make its way onto the field. And having that full power, solar power, mm -hmm. big attack. It looking like it probably will go into the Landorus slot here. And it's going to be a Dynamax on Oliver's side as well. Yeah, both players pulling the trigger at the same mm -hmm. time on their Dynamax Pokemon. Landorus, we know, does threaten the Charizard, but yes. we have mentioned there is that Charlty Berry on Eric's side of the field. So going to be able to take a big Rock-type attack anywhere coming out from that slot, which does give the Charizard a little bit more freedom. And the thing is, by targeting down the Charizard, it leaves that Gastrodon free to throw out another Yawn and beat them very disruptive on Oliver's side of the field. Well, the faster of the two, the Charizard does go for that G-Max Wildfire in the sun, does a significant chunk to the opposing Landorus that's going to retaliate with a Max Airstream. So not actually going for the Max Rockfall, doesn't want to, you know, have the Charty Berry reduce the offensive pressure, but instead will allow Oliver to get the speed up, allowing Landorus to pressure again with another Max Airstream on the next turn. Gastrodon is having an absolute party here at the moment, going for that Yawn into the opposing Incineral, just forcing Oliver to switch. And I love the fact that Eric has gone for the GMAX Wildfire here because this residual damage in a game where we've seen so much defensive plays with strategic switching, having the residual damage is just going to start chipping away and give Eric that momentum. Yeah, it is going to really help him whittle down the HP on Oliver's side of the field. But the one thing that Oliver's done is not, like you mentioned, go for that GMAX, the, the, the Max mm -hmm. Rockfall here, knowing that the Charty Berry is there, going for the Airstream instead to get that speed advantage. The one thing that the Landorus has over the Charizard is that speed deficit. Mm -hmm. He's overcome that now. He's in a position to actually launch off that, that Max Rockfall or just another Airstream if he wants to, to increase the speed even more. The Charty Berry is probably not in a position to allow it to survive with the damage that it's already done. The Incineroar as well, not wanting to fall to sleep, switches for the Rillaboom that's going to be hoping to avoid a third yawn coming out from the Gastrodon. Landorus just going to go for a Max Guard, playing very defensively on this turn as Charizard goes for the Max Airstream, connects onto the Rillaboom, not enough to pick up a KO, but critically gets that speed level back up in Eric's favor. We know that Charizard is a little faster, so brilliant play by Eric. Yeah, huge play by Eric, and uh, oh. you know, great catching the, the Rillaboom on the switch in there because it is going to be a huge threat. The Rillaboom does get in and avoid the yawn this time. So mm. it is in a position to potentially, if it can survive this oh. wildfire, it doesn't look like it's oh. going to, and it's going to drop and go down. Great play here from Eric to get rid of that one huge threat with, to the Gastrodon now, giving it a lot more freedom to be very disruptive. And the Airstream there also putting the Charizard back ahead in the speed tie as well, just to make sure that it is going to be able to hit the Landorus before it can get another attack of this next turn. Indeed, such a sigh of relief for Eric there, being able to get rid of that pesky Rillaboom means Gastrodon's going to have a much better time in this matchup. And as we saw as well, Gastrodon running that Ice Beam is going to be able to apply some pressure to that opposing Landorus, particularly when it's out of its Dynamax state. And, you know, I mean, look at the HP anyway, even then the Dynamax Ice Beam is going to be hitting really hard, being four times effective. Kyogre's joined the field, though, so the weather has changed once again. And we've got the rainy environment up with Gastrodon. Gastrodon's having a great time, Lee. Yeah, Gastrodon's pretty safe here. You know, it doesn't really worry about what the Landorus is going to throw out mm -hmm. too much. And it definitely doesn't worry about anything that the Kyogre can. The Charizard definitely does. It can choose to go for Max Guard here, just have a bit of an extra turn here and allow that kind of chip damage from the residual GMAX Wildfire to chip down the Landorus or the Kyogre. We're seeing the Landorus switch out for the Incineroar here. Um, or it can go for just one final big attack and take potentially an Origin Pulse or a Water Spout coming out from Oliver's side of the field. Yes, Gastrodon just protecting, knowing how critical it is in this match. As Charizard does go for a Nuller Max Airstream, connecting onto the Incineroar, doing about a third of damage, but again, critically boosting up the speed on Eric's side, making sure the speed advantage and momentum is in Eric's favor going into the later stages of this match. Kyogre, however, goes for the Thunder and will be able to pick up the KO against it with a cheeky critical hit as well. So nice reveal there from the Kyogre to be able to connect down onto this opposing Charizard, even in the face of the Gastrodon. And it gives Eric the opportunity now to bring in a Pokemon from the back, maybe something like 
like that Groudon, reset up the weather and apply a lot of pressure to that opposing Incineroar with something like a Precipice Blades. Yeah, that's a big thing for Eric here. I think getting the Groudon in unintimidated. Yes. You know, the Incineroar's out on the field for Oliver, not particularly the position that it wants to be, but you've got to remember that Oliver does have an Intimidate also in the back with that Landorus, but it's kind of risky switching it in on a potential Ice Beam, like you've already mentioned, or even worse, maybe even a Yawn from that Gastrodon that has already been utilized, and it has got plus two speed, so it probably will be outspeeding the Incineroar, but you've got to worry about a potential fake out this turn as well. Yeah, that's very true. The fake out pressure is strong from Oliver at this point. And Eric's actually decided to bring out the Zashin here. Possibly wants to apply some big damage onto that Incineroar, something like a Sacred Sword maybe, um, just to try and remove it from the field so it can not run the risk of intimidating the Groudon later on in this match. Yeah, that's it. And you know, the, the nice thing about having the Incineroar out on the field as well, it's because of its fire typing, mm -hmm. it's not going to take that residual damage. So it's kind of giving Oliver a little bit of room out on the field right now, but it does limit what the Kyogre is able to do. Dashin just protecting as Incineroar goes for the fake out into that slot. Kyogo instead going to go for the Ice Beam here. Finds his mark down onto that opposing Gastrodon. Oliver really starting to think, I need to get rid of this Gastrodon. It is ruining all of my plans. Gastrodon able to take it reasonably well and goes for the Yawn into that Kyogre. Once again, putting Oliver in a difficult situation where if the Kyogre stays on the field, it's going to fall asleep in the next turn. But then if you switch it out, you're going to have to bring that Landorus in. And if the Gastrodon can cool that, Ice Beam's going to go into that slot. Yeah, and it's, it's an easy position for Eric to be in and a really tough one for Oliver. You know, you can see that the damage there that the Ice Beam did and it was respectable damage but it's not enough to pick up the knockout so mm -hmm. you either have to make that decision do you switch in your landerous allow it to maybe get sniped by an ice beam mm -hmm. or do you let your Kyogre go to sleep and be a little bit redundant for the rest of the game I mean, that's the thing, the Life Orb on the Kyogre on Oliver's side, really sort of paying off there. You can see the damage output. Sacred Sword goes down into that Landorus. Oh, it Ooh, just able survives. To just survive on three hit points. Kyogre does go for the Thunder down into this opposing Zashin. So going to deal a huge amount of damage. This Life Orb really, really working to help do the damage output, despite not being able to access water moves. Ice Beam goes down into the opposing Kyogre. So a nice choice there by Oliver to switch the Landorus in on the opposing side. But Kyogre is going to take a little bit of a nap now. Yeah, it is going to take a bit of a nap. But, and you know, it is in range now of Zashian to potentially pick it up with, with something like a Sacred Sword here. Um, the, the Intimidate cycling is going to be nice for Oliver to reduce the uh, mm -hmm. damage on the Zashian, but the thing is, with only having that one Pokemon in the back, it's, it's pretty obvious to Eric if he does predict a switch, what attack he would need to go for. You can go for even a Yawn into the Landorus slot if you would like to this turn. Protect his Ash and just have a little bit of freedom against potentially an Earthquake that could come out here. But again, the Landorus is so low health at the minute. There's Ash in a position where it can just easily pick it off. Landorus just going to protect, doesn't want to have to take an unnecessary Ice Beam here as we move into the last turns of Game 1. Zashin going to go for the Sacred Sword, finds the Protect on the Landorus, and Kyogre, of course, going to be taking a little bit of a sleep. Now the focus goes to that Gastrodon that has gone for the Earth Power, down into the opposing Kyogre, not going to be enough to pick up the KO, but just dealing a little bit more damage to it. And if you take a look at the remaining Pokemon Oliver has got, they are all in really precarious positions here. There's no more GMAX Wildfire here, but anything coming out from Zashin or Gastrodon is going to be able to clean up the KOs. Yeah, and you're kind of hoping, I think, to... Because you, you really have to go after the Landorus with the, the, the Sacred Swords of safe play because you catch the Incineroar if it does switch in on that Landorus. Um, and you need to get rid of the Landorus to protect yourself from a potential Earthquake. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the Gastrodon, you've got to kind of you're going to go on after the Kyogre, so you kind of want to, to hope that your Kyogre can wake up, maybe get an Origin Pulse off onto the Zashin and get rid of that. But then if you do, you still got to worry about the, the, the Groudon in the back as well. Well, the Landorus is able to find another Protect there. Kyogre going for the Thunder. Manages to pick up the KO against that Zashin, removing one of the Restricteds from Eric here. Um, you know, brilliant there from Oliver to get that Protect on the opposing Landorus. But Kyogre, for all its efforts there, waking up and getting a KO, will have to go back to its Pokeball thanks to the Gastrodon here. Really, Gastrodon has been the king counter against this opposing Kyogre in this match. And both of our players now down to their last two remaining Pokemon. Yeah, and you can see how valuable that leftovers is on the Gastrodon here because the one thing is that the lander is on such low health now <laughs> anything that touches it is going to knock it out you're going to see the Groudon come in full health it's a big job for both the Landorus and the Incineroar that Oliver's got left the Intimidate is going to be very useful onto the Groudon in particular and reduce that attack stat and the fake out is going to be useful but it only gives you one turn and it feels like Oliver needs a little more than one turn to deal with both of these really troublesome Pokemon 
That's true. I mean, the Incineroar gets the Intimidate down, but due to the dwindled HP on that Landorus and Incineroar being generally weak to a lot that Groudon can throw its way, it's only going to be a matter of time for Groudon to be able to clean up against that Incineroar, particularly when Incineroar doesn't really have the utility to be able to deal back any damage in return. It is going to go for that Fake Out, though, just going to stop the Groudon from moving in this turn as it's not running Protect. Landorus going for that Rock Slide, though, just going to collect a little bit of chip damage on both of them, but of course, flinches could happen, and Gastrodon... Oh, Groudon, who Gastrodon Groudon goes for the Earth Power down into the opposing Incineroar. So while, you know, the Groudon got fake outed, was going to flinch anyway, um, Gastrodon was able to break through the Rock Slide and just do a little bit more damage to this opposing Incineroar. Yeah, and maybe that is it, because you're kind of lot you can't really go for the Earthquake with Landorus because mm -hmm. you're going to knock out your own Incineroar. It's not really a preferable thing to do <laughs> here. You really are relying on the flinches from the rock slides here. You've got to hope they hit and you hope you get <laughs> a lot of them in a row and not allow either of these Pokemon to move because you can see now the Earth Power has done so much damage to Incineroar and like we've already mentioned, the Landorus hanging by a thread on Oliver's side of the field. I mean, it can happen sometimes. You go for that rock slide, and when there's a rock slide, there is a way. But instead, Landorus is going to go for a fly here, jumping up into the sky. And we'll see it on the next turn, which target it has gone down into. With Groudon going for the rock tomb, not wanting to risk a Precipice Blade miss, just goes straight down into that Incineroar and removes it from play. And, you know, Gastrodon firing a nice beam into the void there. But I think the key thing here for Eric is knowing in this next turn, when Landorus returns, Gastrodon's just going to be able to hit its target. Yeah, that's the thing. You know, the Landorus is going to be the faster Pokemon over the Gastrodon. Gastrodon, so even if the fly does hit, it's not going to have enough to knock out either the Gastrodon or the Groudon from this level that they're at at the minute. And the Ice Beam is going to be enough to take it down. And even anything like a Rock Tomb from the Groudon also going to be enough on that 3 HP that the Landorus is carrying. Well, Landorus comes back into the action, finds his mark on the Groudon, doing a significant chunk of damage with those flying moves as the Fire Punch will secure game one for Eric Rios with a cheeky critical hit in this Masters Grand Final. So Eric up one game, one more game away from winning the title. Yeah, that was an incredible set. The way that Eric positioned his Gastrodon and utilized these yawns just made it near impossible mm -hmm. for Oliver to really get the Rillaboom onto the field and threaten the Gastrodon like he needs to, to remove it. We saw the Gastrodon come onto the field how early on in that game. Very early. sat on that field until the very last turn. It was so instrumental in that one game. It's the one thing that Oliver really needs to make sure that he has a way or tries to remove. Uh, but it's difficult because you try and reposition and Eric's playing the yawn so well and so effectively that where if you reposition wrong, you get that call wrong on the what side of the field. You're going to get caught with a yawn and then do you... Do you take the risk of staying on the field to go to sleep and not get a return on maybe staying in and going for a grassy glide? It's very risky. And, you know, Oliver in a position now where he's got nothing to lose. You know, he has to try and pull this game back to tie it up to take two game three. Um, and it's going to be very difficult if Eric kind of goes with the same tact in that game plan. He was able to get the Charizard in at the right time. Um, he took a really nice risk when in front of the lander is going for the airstream, catching yes. the Rillaboom, mm -hmm. getting that speed advantage back and putting him kind of in the driving seat again. You thought for a moment that Oliver, yeah, you've got the airstream, great call, mm -hmm. getting yourself ahead of the Charizard. Just unfortunately didn't really capitalize from that point on. I mean, that was the turning point in the match when that Rillaboom got KO because when you look at how well that Gastrodon performed, it was absolutely phenomenal. I think nobody's going to take anything away from Gastrodon. But on Oliver's side, he is the perfect counter in the form of that Rillaboom. And if Rillaboom is able to get onto the field in the grassy terrain, going for those grassy glides, there's not a lot that Gastrodon can really do. And I think Eric played so well to keep going for those yawns and obviously not dealing any damage, but just keeping Rillaboom at a distance, being like, I'm going to deal with you a little bit later on. I need Gastrodon to just have the pressure with his ability on the field right now. And like you said, going for that max Airstream was just such a pivotal turn because it did so much of that really room just managed with the wildfire to be able to remove it from the field. So a nice bit of synergy from the Charizard and the Gastrodon there, helping each other out a bit. Yeah, definitely. Like you say, the perfect partner to Gastrodon to protect <laughs> against that really boom is that Charizard. And it, it doesn't have to worry too much about the Landorus really because you, you do have your own Intimidate with Incineroar if you'd like to reduce the damage there. But you've also got that Charty Berry that we've already mentioned. We did see how much the... Uh, the airstream did yes. to the Charizard, though. It's, it's not a. It's doing a considerable amount of damage, so it's not something that you can ignore. And probably the right decision from Oliver to try and get that speed control. The thing is, like we've mentioned, it, it's trying to get that Rillaboom in, unaffected by the yawn, in a position where it's not super threatened by something on Eric's side of the field. 
and then have the opportunity to go for the, the grass glide to either force the gastrodon out for a turn, which might create an opening for you to get your Kyogre in and try and do something that way, but it's extremely difficult. You feel like with the gastrodon active, it's really preventing Oliver from choosing the Kyogre as it is his max option when in something like this game, you think if you can remove the gastrodon, the Kyogre can just run through the team. Another thing I really liked that Eric did was keep that Groudon kind of hidden in the back for a while. We saw it obviously come out straight away, um, but then it stayed at the back. And when you look at the four Pokemon that Oliver brought, the Groudon really struggles against a lot of them. Obviously, the Rillaboom and the Kyogre can deal huge, huge damage to that Groudon. And then at the same time, the Landorus and the Incineroar are just there to keep intimidating it, so it's not going to be dealing out a big offensive pressure. So I think it was quite nice from Eric to keep it in the back. Obviously, we knew it was there, and you had that weather option to switch it in if and when maybe the Charizard needed it. But when Gastrodon was out front, it's like, I'm the ground type, I've got you, it's okay. I will be there, I will support you. But I like that from Eric, having it in the back and just knowing that it could be there at the end to possibly pick up a KO if and where it was needed to. But playing it really kind of safe around that Groudon, keeping it in the back. And I really like that kind of strategy, looking at the four that Oliver brought and just going, I'm not going to risk putting my Groudon in a bad position to either take some damage or be double intimidated and then kind of useless on the field. Yeah, it was really used as a, a kind of utility Pokemon rather than an offensive threat that mm -hmm. sometimes it's renowned for, you know. I think Eric's utility of the Groudon in particular in this match perfect and he, he, he kept it right till the, the perfect moment at the end of the game just to kind of wrap things up for him and make it quite easy to get that first win. I think if you do look at Oliver's options, if he's worried about speed control and, and maybe giving himself another outlet to have a way to hit something like the Gastrodon, you do have the Tornadus there. It can provide that instant tailwind, give you that instant speed control boost to put you ahead of everything on Eric's side of the field and it also has Hurricane hits 100% accurate in the rain as well. And it, you know, will do a good amount of damage to the Gastron. It's just trying to get any damage onto it because you need to get rid of it. It's such a threat as we've seen. Um, so they are other options, but saying that I don't think the four that Oliver brought in that match were the wrong four. No, I completely agree. The four Pokemon Oliver brought were brilliant in the match. Just that Gastrodon was just a force to be reckoned with. Like you said, Lee, it sat on the field. It went for those yawns, and it just meant that Oliver constantly had to adapt to the game that Eric was playing. Eric was the one really forcing Oliver to make those switches and not being able to capitalize on his positions when he had, um, you know, a good board state. Having that really boom on the field was what Oliver needed in order to KO that Gastrodon that clearly was causing so many issues. When you are running Kyogre, you want to make sure that your Kyogre has the freedom to be able to deal damage with those powerful water type moves, particularly in the rain, particularly as it is running Life Orb as well. Those are going to be devastating. And when you're completely locked down to picking your moves like Thunder and Ice Beam instead, then it's not going to be dealing the impactful damage that you need it to do as your restricted Pokemon. No, definitely not. You want to be every time unleashing that Max Geyser, especially like you say, with the Life Orb attached to the Kyogre. That is what you want to be going for. And being able to unlock the ability to do that means dealing and getting rid of the Gastrodon on Eric's side of the field. Exactly. Well, here we have it. It is game two of the Masters Division Finals here in Frankfurt, Germany. Can Eric win one more game to take the title or is Oliver going to force a game three? Eric bringing out the Charizard and the Groudon, whereas Oliver has gone for the Landorus and the Kyogre. So once again, we're going to see the weather disperse out onto the field, but the sun will be the dominant one at the end. It will be once again, you know, the Kyogre coming out on the field with that Groudon. And we know the speed tiers of both of these Pokemon, how they've been trained. The Groudon is the slow Pokemon, meaning that its weather will overwrite the rain, getting that sun onto the field and putting that Charizard in a nicer position. But as we saw in game one, it'll be interesting to see if both players take a different approach mm -hmm. to this. They were very tentative about how they approached. Uh, the, the first game didn't really want to commit to anything in that first turn, saw a lot of switching, a lot of adjusting board positions until they felt comfortable to kind of start going forward and making moves in this game. Well, speaking of ball position changes, Gastrodon is back in the action here in game two, and Eric doing another double switch. Groudon returning into the back as Zashin jumps out into the battlefield. So Groudon um, going to hide out in the back a little bit as Gastrodon is going to apply that pressure to the opposing Kyogre, stopping it from going for any of those powerful water-type moves, uh, something like the Max Geyser. Landorus is just going to go for a Protect, though. So Oliver playing defensively with that Pokemon in the beginning of this game and with the Kyogre as well. But once again, Kyogre fails to get the Protect off in turn one. There's just no need. There's no need for it in this turn with that double switch from Eric's side of the field. And now 
You know, the lander is in a position where it could potentially go from Max and threaten mm -hmm. that Zashin, but it's going to take a lot of damage in the process. But the Zashin pretty threatened if that is the play. But you've also got to worry about the Gastrodon sitting next to the Zashin. Uh, offers, obviously, that Yawn support. It's preventing the Kyogre from really doing too much right now. And um, it can it can also throw out a big Ice Beam into that lander slot as well, which is pretty risky. So it's a big play if Eric uh, Oliver decides to go for that. That's the thing. My eyes are on that Gastrodon. If it wanted to go for um, an Ice Move into that Posing Landorus, it's going to be heavily threatening. But at the same time, is it going to go for a yawn? And I was wondering if Ola was maybe going to make a switch, but instead, Dynamaxing up that Landorus, like you said there, Lisa, possibly going to see a powerful Max Airstream or something like a Max Quake come out to apply pressure to that opposing Zashin. Zashin, however, just going to go straight for the Sacred Sword into the Landorus. Only does a little bit of damage here as Landorus can retaliate with that Max Airstream to getting the speed up and is targeting down that Gastrodon. Gastrodon was such a problem for Oliver. Brilliant adaptation to just say, hey, do you know what? You were annoying me last game. Let's get rid of you so that I can allow my Rillaboom to come in and my other Pokemon and my Kyogre to be freed up a little bit. Kyogre with the Ice Beam as well, doubling down into it. Oh, Gastrodon is gone in this game too. The most unorthodox way to get rid of Gastrodon. <laughs> Great play here from Oliver. Going for that max airstream. It was one thing I was thinking. You need to make sure that you get that airstream mm -hmm. off with your landers. You know, you've got to commit to that. Doing enough damage into the Gastrodon. We knew from game one how much that ice beam, the life orb boost it did from the Kyogre into the Gastrodon. Got it to the point where it was able to pick up the knockout. This is going to free up the, the Kyogre completely oh, yeah. in this end game. Change it. And the lander is now on the other side of the field in a great position. It's going to be faster than that Charizard. It's going to be able to throw out some huge damage onto it. The only thing for Oliver is he'd probably like to have the Kyogre in the back to bring the rain in now to kind of help reduce the damage from this Charizard. It has got its preferred weather up on the field. There is the Charty Berry there that we've already mentioned and maybe another Airstream from Oliver is the play here into the Charizard. It does leave that Zashin kind of open to be able to get something like a Behemoth Blade onto the Landorus, although it has got the interior. Uh, you know, that the, the Zashin is plus one at the minute, so it will be hitting extremely hard. I mean, in that turn, Oliver really did flip control. Can apply a lot of pressure, like you said, with another Max Airstream to try and counter a potential Max Airstream from the Charizard. But at the same time, it could go for a powerful Max Rockfall into that Charizard. The issue there is that Charty Berry. We know that the Charizard's going to be in a good position to take one of those, can fire off, like you said, either the Max Airstream and kind of even out a little bit. And we know when it's even, the Charizard is faster. So Eric has a few options to consider here. Um, and as does Oliver, whether you want to maybe go for the Airstream, which he is indeed going for, or go for that Max Rockfall. But I think the Airstream is a good call because Charizard are very likely to go for one of their very own as well. And you can see that it does 50% to that opposing Charizard, making it very vulnerable at the end of the next turn while boosting up the speed on Oliver's side. Kyogre goes for a water spout it's and enough. takes out the KO. It's enough to get the Charizard, that is a huge turn. Eric Ooh. going for that Gigantamax with the Charizard, but that double up with the speed advantage there, even in the sun, enough to get that Charizard, Lou. Oh, fantastic from that Kyogre. It has been KO for its efforts, though, from the play rough coming out from the opposing Zash in there. But amazing from Oliver to just go, do you know what? I'm going to double down into these Pokemon, remove them, not allow Eric to have the ball position or the flexibility with either option. And suddenly, Eric is down two Pokemon. Yeah, and it doesn't even matter now that the Kyogre's gone because the Kyogre's kind of done its job. You kind of want to bring it to get rid of the big threat that is that Charizard. And now the Incineroar coming in for Oliver, going to drop and intimidate onto both these physical type attackers on on Eric's side of the field and make it very difficult for him. The thing is that the the great thing that Oliver's done is get rid of the Gigantamax turn yes. one and not allow Eric to get any momentum from that Gigantamax here, making great use of this Landorus. Oh, and I think we saw the little celebration there from Oliver as Eric locks in the forfeit wow. here. It's game yeah. three. Oh. Phenomenal way to end out that game too. Oliver really took command, control, and just KO'd Eric's Pokemon that were key and critical to his victory in game one. And you can see he's excited, he is ready. Game three, one more match, Lee, and we have a European international champion. And I it know. could be either of them. Yeah, incredible play there from Oliver. He had to make some big call in that match. And he definitely did, and it paid off for him, and he is reaping the rewards now making the comeback, tying the match up, taking it to a game three, and giving himself the chance to be the champion. That was just a phenomenal game one and game two from these players. So you just know that game three is going to be exceptional as well. You know, in that second game, both the players came out with very kind of similar modes in the sense we both had the weathers out there on the battlefield. And Eric very quick to do that double switch and reposition the board into a more favorable position for him. Gastrodon out in the field, applying all the pressure that we've talked about. But I think the key adaptation there was just Oliver going to know what you need to go. The Charizard's here. I cannot allow it to keep playing these mind games about the Max Airstream or the Max Wildfire and getting that residual damage back on the battlefield. Just 
removing her, I think, was exceptional. Yeah, and I couldn't agree more. And it really, Lander is showing its worth mm -hmm. and how good uh, an option it is against this sort of team. Because if you you give it a little bit of room, like we saw Eric kind of, you know, probably calling a switch there, thinking Lander is going to switch out here. Incinero will come in, maybe. Let's catch it with the Sacred Sword that comes into that slot. Oliver not going for that, just taking that gamble going, no, I'm going to get rid of this Gastrodon right now. Knowing the damage was key there because the reward, like it's like we said, you know, it, it really opens the door for the Kyogre to just kind of come in and just mm -hmm. do enough to make the game completely in on Oliver's side of the field. Yeah, the switch to the offensive plays from Oliver just swung the momentum right into his favor. Both these players played game one relatively defensively, you know, really trying to think through each turn and ball position state where they wanted to be for not just the next turn, but the turn ahead and how their opponent was going to move. And you could see in that game too, Eric took the same strategy, but Oliver just took a moment and went, you know what, let's go big or go home. Let's pick up those KOs. <laughs> and it has now earned him this game three. So. Pokemon trainers, we are one game away from our Masters Division, European International Champion being crowned, taking home all the prizes, the titles, the accolades, and the history. You can just feel it. It is so tense here. Who is going to be our international 2022 European Champion? And we are getting into game three here. The score currently, Eric Rios won, Oliver Eskelin won. Tied up going into game three. The next... Here we Next go. Is going to be our champion then. <laughs> exactly. Oliver's got Kyogre and Landorus. Eric, Charizard, and Groudon. We know that the sun will be dominant at the end of this turn. But again, difficult situation here for Eric. You've got the Charizard in play, but you've got that Landorus opposing you. And if you're Oliver, is that Gastrodon going to make an appearance for the third time? Yeah, that's the thing. Uh, is Eric going to make the same kind of play again? Because if he does, then Oliver has the, the opportunity to maybe think, okay, well, if we're going to see a double switch again, I could maybe go for the max here anyway go into the Charizard with an airstream expecting maybe the the Gastrodon to come in but not seeing it this time the mind games are really difficult in this situation and with everything on the line it's incredibly difficult to kind of commit to these big risky plays when you don't necessarily need to in these early stages of the game Exactly, every decision counts, and Incineroar jumps onto the field, crucially throwing down the Intimidate against that opposing Groudon, so it's wise from Eric to be able to switch it out, bring in the Zashin, that now gets onto the battlefield unintimidated. The Intrepid Sword boost will boost up to plus one attack as well. Nice for Oliver as well to have the Fake Out utility going into that next turn, possibly to pressure down onto that opposing Zashin, but looks like Eric is also making a switch in this Game 3 to go from defensive to offensive play. The Gigantamax Charizard is going to come straight out into the action here for Eric, and there's no no Gastrodon in sight, so we have to keep an eye on that Kyogre as well. Yeah, the big thing though is that this sun is on the field. It's going to give that Charizard a little more protection, but big question is, is Oliver going to go for the oh. Dynamax with the Kyogre as well, calling no Gastrodon on the field for Eric. Kyogre coming out, matching that Gigantamax Charizard. Absolutely love this play here. We finally see the Kyogre in the environment it wants to be in, going for that Dynamax, and it's going to be looking to try and bring the rain onto the field and get a KO against that Charizard before it possibly can get shut down by a Gastrodon that could be hiding in the back. Charizard goes for the G-Max Wildfire, however, catches the Incineroar that switches in, still deals a huge chunk of damage, thanks to obviously having the solar power ability, the sun in the sky for that Charizard. But Kyogre goes for the Max Lightning, connects down onto the opposing Charizard. Huge damage, wow, but not enough to wow. pick up the KO. Huge huge hit and you've got to think now with the solar power gonna kick in the oh. ability it takes away health at the end of the turn with the sun active is that gonna be enough to knock out this yes. Charizard and it is the Charizard is gone Oliver getting that huge knockout from the Kyogre here so powerful with that life orb that it's carrying I love this Kyogre going for the Dynamax here even if there was a Gastrodon the Max Lightning isn't gonna be you know brought in by that it's not going for the Max guys it just removes such a big threat and Eric loses his gigantic Max Pokemon before it's able to go for the second two Max moves. Phenomenal play there by Oliver. If you're Eric, though, what Pokemon are you going to bring in now to go side by side with Zashin? Yeah, that's a big question, I think. The nice thing that Eric has got is a little bit of a, a kind of consolation is that he did get that G Max Wildfire off. He's got mm -hmm. that residual damage. It's going to help him out, chip these Pokemon down on Oliver's side of the field and just give him that little bit of a helping hand that he needs after losing that Charizard. Gastrodon making its way onto the field, going to limit what that Kyogre is able to do and kind of just start to disrupt. We've seen the yawns. It's got a mm -hmm. free target on either the, the Incineroar or the Kyogre slot here. This Session has to be a bit careful. Obviously, the sun up, the, the Incineroar on the opposite side of the field has taken a lot of damage, but it still does threaten big damage with the Flare Blitz if it's left unchecked. 
particularly with the sun up as well, like you said, Incineroar can apply tr pressure to that Zashan, but Zashan as well can go for something like the Sacred Sword and just remove that Incineroar threat from play. But that then leaves, again, that Kyogre really unchecked to go for something. You could go for, like, the Max Lightning, just deal some more damage, or even the Max Hellstorm into that opposing Gastrodon. We saw how much the Ice Beam had done previously. Zashan, fastest thing on the field, going for the Behemoth Blade, going to find its mark down on the opposing Incineroar. And I like this play because if Incineroar had switched out, you don't want to have to go for something like that Sacred Sword into a Pokemon and deal minimal damage. The Behemoth Blade covers all of those switch options. Kyogre does indeed go for the Max Hailstorm. It's going to find its way down on this little Gastrodon sitting on the field and does over 50% damage to it. So you can just see with the Life Orb how pivotal it is helping out this Groudon by dealing big, big damage. Yeah, that's huge. And the big thing here is that Max Lightning not only boosting the, the, the damage from the Thunder, it's giving the Kyogre the immunity from the Yawn now. With that electric terrain on the field, yes. the Kyogre grounded, affected by the electric terrain, not going to be able to be put to sleep. So on multiple levels, mm -hmm. the Max Lightning, always the correct play. Great play from Oliver. Big risk, obviously, but taking the chance when it appeared. And, you know, not having to worry about the Yawn is such a nice... Oh, yeah. Added bonus to that whole entire play. Oh, that's such a nice observation there, Lee. Working with the synergy between that Kyogre with the Max Lightning. And throughout this entire set, we've seen this rivalry between the Kyogre and the Gastrodon. And I really think that Kyogre in this game through is just absolutely not holding back, just making sure to shut down the Gastrodon. And can again now apply threat with a knockout by going for something like the Max Hailstorm. And even if the Gastrodon wanted to switch out, bring in something like the Groudon from the back, I mean, it's the only Pokemon in the back, it has to be. Groudon doesn't want to take a Max Hailstorm either. No, not at all. And, and, and Delander is coming in, getting that Intimidate, all important Intimidate onto the Zashian, really slowing it down. And here is the Rillaboom, the one thing that the Gastrodon does not want to see. Basically, all Oliver really needs to do is deal with this Zashian. The mm -hmm. bad thing about bringing the Rillaboom in is it does get rid of that Electric Terrain loot unless we do see a Max Lightning into the Zashian here. That is very true. And like you said, Zashin's going to be the target for Oliver. So Eric wisely protecting here just to see what Oliver is going to be doing. Gastrodon also protecting its little self, giving Eric a turn to really start thinking through the next couple of turns of this match. Kyogre does go for that Max Hailstorm, really trying to remove Gastrodon from the battlefield. As you can see, does minimal damage through that protect. So Gastrodon is going to be hanging on a little bit longer here in this game three as the Hail Chip and residual damage will come around the battlefield. Yeah, it's all going to take its little turn to chip down each Pokemon on the field. Gastrodon in an awkward position here, though, because if you, the way you look at it, you know, you, like I said, the electric terrain taken away, so you are a bit more susceptible to those yawns, but the Gastrodon now in a really, really tough spot because it's mm -hmm. just protected, and we know that the, the, the Groudon's in the back, and neither Pokemon want to come in and take a Grassy Glide, so what do you make the decision to do? Do you let the Gastrodon go down, or do you mm -hmm. switch in the Groudon to take the Grassy Glide and and hope to do enough damage with the Zashin onto the Rillaboom. The problem is if you do that, Eric, uh, Oliver is able to just switch the Kyogre out right now, get that Landorus back onto the field, get another Intimidate onto the Zashin, lower the power of the Behemoth Blade, the Sacred Sword that we've seen, protect that Rillaboom a little bit more and give it the room that it needs to just start throwing these Grassy Glides or Wood Hammers or whatever it's got, Grass-type attack into that Gastrodon slot to remove or try and remove whatever's coming in on that space. I completely agree. Oliver has to think very carefully about these next couple of turns. He does have the Landorus in the back that could be a Pokemon that will be key to picking up KOs against that Zashin if you're able to eliminate the partner Pokemon. Rillaboom is going to go for that Grassy Glide, targets down into that Gastrodon, which will, of course, pick up the KO against it. So choosing on Eric's side to just let the Gastrodon go down. Groudon will now come on, onto the battlefield and go for um, some events of pressure. Set that sun up as well. Zashin is going to go for the Behemoth Blade, though targeting down into the Rillaboom. Does a significant chunk of damage, but not able to pick up a KO. So when Groudon comes onto the battlefield, it's going to be in a really precarious situation. Kyogre not... I don't think it's going to be going for any water spouts now that Gastrodon is down because the HP has dwindled. But something like the Ice Beam Grassy Glide combination that you mentioned, Lee, is just going to remove that Groudon. Yeah, that's it. And it's, it's getting very close here. Is the residual damage here? And oh, one! The boom hanging one. on barely there as the Grassy Terrain going to heal it a little bit back up there. And you can see how effective this residual damage is. And so important that Eric actually got that off. It's really cut down the HP of that Kyogre. I mean, it's not going to be as effective. Mm -hmm. But like you say, the Kyogre can potentially, if it wants to, switch out here, get that Landorus onto the field. The problem is doing that if Eric kind of targets into the Kyogre and the Landorus takes too much damage coming onto the field. Trying to drop an Intimidate here, maybe, maybe you're better off trying to just get 
maybe as much damage as you can with the Rillaboom and to see the Groudon. We know the Assault Vest's on there, can't protect. Get some damage onto it, protect your Kyogre for a turn, and then get your Landorus in, drop another Intimidate onto that Zashian, drop a, an Intimidate onto the Groudon, and then try and utilize your Landorus. The problem is with the Earthquake that you probably want to go for with the Landorus is that the Grassy Terrain is going to lower the damage output on that and make it difficult to get the damage you need. So you're going to try and maybe have to rely on the Kyogre. Switching the Kyogre out might be the better play. It's a very tough one to call, though. Eric in a decent position, though, with the full health ground on and the Zashin able to do a lot of damage. But with that Intimidate in the back, it is going to make it difficult to get the damage you need on the field. Yeah, and I think you're right. Switching out that Kyogre to have the weather control in the end stage of this game three is going to be critical for Oliver. Getting the Intimidate is very nice against both the physical attackers. And, you know, if you're Eric, you knew they were going to be intimidated at some point. Rillaboom going for the Grassy Glide, though, in the terrain into the ground on. Not enough to pick up a KO. Does about two thirds of damage. As Ashen goes for the player rough, does connect onto the Landorus that has switched in, but is able to take that reasonably well. Groudon going to follow up with the Fire Punch, though, into the Rillaboom and pick up the KO against it. So this end board state is going to be Oliver bringing that Kyogre back in, and we know how fast it can be. So if you're in a position being Oliver and you want to maybe protect up your Kyogre and get the Landorus to deal with this Ashen in some way, Groudon's going to really, really suffer in the face of that Kyogre. Yeah, we know, like you say, the speed tiers of both these Pokemon. The Kyogre is trained to be faster than the Groudon. Oliver has essentially won the Weather War. Mm -hmm. The question is, can the Zashin knock out the Kyogre from this range? If the Kyogre can survive and get an Origin Pulse off, then this game looks like it's probably going to be Oliver's. It's not as clean cut as that, but that is essentially what you need to do. Does Oliver protect his Pokemon here? Maybe just the extra turn, just to get a little bit of extra recovery from the grassy terrain, because that little bit of extra HP might be enough. Um, you know, that, that could be an option here. But you've got to have your Kyogre protect uh, to, to survive yes. the attack from the Zashin, essentially. Well, Landorus going for the protect, as is the Kyogre on Oliver's side. Eric just going to have to go into protect at this point. Zashin goes for the play rough into the protect of the Kyogre. That was the target of choice as Groudon goes for the Rock Tomb into what would have been obviously the Landorus if it hadn't protected. I mean, we've seen from the abilities alone the, the order of the speeds here with these Pokemon. It's going, you've got Zashin the fastest on the field, then the Landorus, then the Kyogre, and then the Groudon. Yeah, it's um, the Zashin is having to probably rely on that player rough as well. Mm -hmm. And it's not the most accurate of attacks. Ooh. So that is something if Eric is clicking into the Kyogre with that, you've got to pray that it does hit. Because if it misses, then it really makes the game very difficult for him. If it hits, there's a good chance it can take it out. But will that grassy terrain HP recovery that we've just seen on the Kyogre be enough to allow that Kyogre, when there's actually on minus one, to survive and get a big water type attack off in the rain on both of these Pokemon on Eric's side of the field. Both players just taking their time here. Oh, play rough oh, misses the Kyogre. Miss. Lander is able to go for the lock, rock slide here. It's connecting down onto both the opposing Pokemon. Will it get the flinch on the opposing Groudon? Gets a critical hit, but it doesn't really matter. Oh, the Kyogre is able to go for the ice beam, targeting down into the opposing Groudon, and will be able to get the KO. Wow. That play rough miss was that critical. Is huge. That is a huge miss. Massive for Oliver, really unfortunate for Eric here. If that connects, we still don't know, would it have been enough to knock out? Pro it would have been very close, very close, depending on how the Kyogre has been trained, but really unfortunate. Grassy terrain ending now, and the Landorus in a position where the Kyogre can protect, can go for an earthquake, do some big damage to the Zashin. Everything down to the Zashin for Eric. Can it turn this match around against the Kyogre? It, as we've mentioned, mm -hmm. is the fastest thing on the field. So if you can pick off the Kyogre now, it is risky because of the Protect potentially coming out, the Earthquake coming out from the Landorus. Which one do you target? It's a big call from Eric. Very experienced player. I'm sure he is... Uh, it's just a hard one to it's just a hard one to call at this point. I mean my heart is racing. Goodness knows what the hearts of our players are like at the moment. The Zashin is going for the protect here, just gonna see what Oliver is going to do. Landorus is gonna go for a protect as well. Leaving the Kyogre free to relatively do what it wants. Going for the Thunder, you know, 100 percent accurate in the rain. Really nice play here. And with the life fall can certainly deal a significant chunk to that Zashin. And I think the key thing here is just all eyes on the Landorus. The grassy terrain has now disappeared from the battlefield. These earthquakes are gonna be dealing significant chunk, particularly single target single target damage into that Zashin. Yeah, and now Oliver's made the play where he can protect the Kyogre, knowing that the Zashin, well, it can go for a double protect. It's risky, though, but he's free to go for an Earthquake here and get some huge damage. Like you said, single target Earthquake onto the Zashin. Will that just be enough? No protects coming out from Oliver's side of the field. Behemoth Blade from the Zashin. It's going to be into that Landorus slot on Oliver's side of the field. Oh. Not enough. 
Lewis hangs on. Not able to pick up the KO against the Lander as they can go for a Rock Slide in retaliation, only dealing a minimal amount of damage here. But the Kyogre is going to follow up with the Thunder, using the Rain to find his mark on the Zashin. Does a significant chunk of damage, but not enough to get the KO. So Zashin going to be able to hang on for one more turn. It is worth noting that the Kyogre on Oliver's side of the field does not have Origin Pulse. It has got mm -hmm. Water Spout as its only Water type attack. So having such low health, it is going to be a lower attack yes. move. So that's why we're seeing Oliver relying on the Thunder in this situation. It's still difficult though, which Pokemon do you target? Do you, you know, there's Ashen now. Is the Thunder going to be enough to pick up the knockout? That is the question. Will it be enough from the damage that we've just seen? Uh, the range still on the field for one more turn. So you've got one more turn to take advantage of this 100% accurate Thunder if you do go for it. Well, Oliver, just going for a double protect here. I was going to say, well, where is the Zashin targeting? It's gone back to the play rough, was going down into that opposing Kyogre slot. And uh, I mean, this is where things look so difficult for the Zashin. I mean, you are the fastest thing on the field. You could pick up the KO against the Kyogre, but then the Landorus can go for the Earthquake. You could pick up the KO against the Landorus, but then Kyogre can go for that Thunder. The issue is, though, the rain has disappeared now, Lee. That thunder is not going to be 100% accurate. And we have seen a pretty critical miss already in this game three. Yeah, that is the big thing. And Eric, it's made it a little bit easier for Eric now where he, he can say, well, let me attack the landers here. Get rid of that earthquake threat. And let's hope that the thunder without the rain does miss. And there's a good chance I might even survive it anyway, known from the previous damage. Mm -hmm. So it's probably the best way to do it. But this is also a play as well, giving the protect avoiding the earthquake especially oh. if the Kyogre does not protect and Oliver is going to go for it and knock his own Kyogre out from the earthquake from the oh. Landorus and this locks it up for Eric he's made a perfect predict there with the protect and he is going to be going on 